Hey everybody, happy Thursday. Now today's video is all about Munchausen syndrome by proxy. What is it and why does it happen? But before I jump into that, are you new to my channel? Welcome. I am a licensed therapist and I create educational mental health videos and I release those on Mondays and on Thursdays. So make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss out. But now let's jump into today's topic. You've probably heard about Munchausen syndrome more recently because of the HBO documentary, Mommy Dead and Dearest, and the Hulu series, The Act. And if you don't know what any of these two shows are about, they are both based on the real and disturbing and really tragic story of Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Now, Dee Dee was Gypsy Rose's mother. And although Gypsy Rose was born happy and healthy, her mother made her believe she was very ill confining her to a wheelchair from age eight, even though her legs worked just fine, telling her that she had cancer and making her sh shave all her hair off, and even making her be fed through a feeding tube for a long time, all the while accepting donations and support from various nonprofit organizations, you know, like the Make-A-Wish Foundation or the Ronald McDonald House. And this story ends tragically with Gypsy Rose getting her boyfriend Nicholas to kill her mom, Dee Dee, back in 2015. And Gypsy Rose recently pled guilty and is currently serving a 10 year prison sentence for the crime. Since this documentary was so shocking and upsetting, people are asking a lot of questions about her mom and what could possibly cause someone to pretend their child was so sick when they really weren't. Or how could Gypsy Rose, you know, ever consider having someone kill her mother? Like, why would she be so upset? What's the big deal? So let's just get into it. And I wanna start by talking about Munchausen syndrome, which is now called factitious disorder. Now, factitious disorder can be something that we impose on ourselves, as well as something we impose on someone else. The only difference between those two things is really that one is called factitious disorder and the other is called factitious disorder by proxy. Now, basic factitious disorder is diagnosed when someone falsifies physical or psychological signs or symptoms, or even causes injury or disease associated with the falsification, which really just means that someone will fake that they're sick or even harm themselves to create the same symptoms and to fool a doctor or a provider into believing that they actually are ill. Now they must also present themselves as ill, impaired or injured, obviously, and this behavior must still happen even when there aren't any outside rewards, like they're not getting any pity from other people or money, help, support, etc. And finally, this must not be happening because of a different mental illness, like delusional disorder or any other psychotic disorder. Because what that really means is that they, would, they could have a delusion about having cancer. They could truly believe that they're ill, and that's not the same thing, okay? Now the criteria for factitious disorder by proxy is really the same, except that the person who has this disorder is pretending that someone in their life is ill. It's not them. So in the by proxy diagnosis, the perpetrator, not the victim, receives the diagnosis of factitious disorder by proxy. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that it's clear, but feel free to ask any questions that you have in those comments down below, okay? I'm happy to, to go through as much many of them as I can. But now the most common form of factitious disorder by proxy is a mother to her child, just like in the Dee Dee and Gypsy Rose case, but it can happen to anyone. But the important thing to remember is that while it can appear like the perpetrator is caring and loving to their victim, that's only in public so that they can get attention and praise for being so caring and loving. Because when they go home and are alone with their victim, the perpetrator will abuse the victim emotionally and physically as they try to make them sick. Remember, they'll do things to cause those symptoms. This is very dangerous and a shocking 9% of children die as a result of a parent having factitious disorder by proxy. And many physicians are not aware of the signs. And they can also be distracted by all the symptoms that their patient is supposedly having. I mean, just think about it. A mother who has factitious disorder by proxy has so many illnesses to choose from. She could even pick and choose some symptoms from various illnesses to ensure that the doctors are confused and request more testing and or appointments to see their child. Then also because these abusive people tend to harm their victims to make it appear as if they're sick, 
can be really hard for a doctor to know what symptoms are real versus what ones are being faked. There have even been reports of parents with factitious disorder by proxy threatening doctors with malpractice if they don't figure out why their child is constantly so sick. And this chaos can create the perfect storm for them to continue looking like an amazing caretaker or parent, getting attention and support all the while harming their victim or child. However, there are some things to look out for and ways to catch them in the act. First, just notice if the same child has many various illnesses over a short period of time. Second, notice that if the doctor doesn't pay much attention to the parent or perpetrator, they will escalate the symptoms or issue until they get the attention that they want. And finally, notice if the parent or caretaker seems at ease in the hospital and happy to really rid themselves of their parental or caretaking responsibilities while they're there. there it's been reported that they tend to leave their victim alone and go chat with other moms or caretakers and overall just seem really thrilled to be there chatting up with doctors and nurses trying to make friends in the hospital. It's very interesting. Now, treatment is obviously recommended for anyone who suffers from factitious disorder or factitious disorder by proxy. However, it is reported that most who have this, these disorders are not interested at all in treatment and often don't see any issue with what they're doing. Now, they hypothesize that those with factitious disorder in any form most likely have a history of physical abuse but have never processed it. Some other research also shows that mothers who have factitious disorder by proxy often have a very distant, if not a completely gone spouse, meaning the husband or wife or whomever they were with is just not interested in them, not involved, some work a lot, some are divorced, some were abusive. They just are trying to do anything to kind of bring them back into the family. And so they pretend the child is ill in order to get the husband or wife back in the picture. But because not many receive treatment or are honest when they're mandated to see a therapist, some have been mandated and just lie because that's kind of what they do, there isn't much positive data to show which types of therapy could work or what issues could lead someone to having factitious disorder. But since not many receive treatment or are honest when they're mandated to see a therapist, because a lot of them get mandated and they just lie because that's kind of what they do, so there isn't much positive data to show which types of therapy work or what issues could lead someone to having factitious disorder of any kind. And after reading all the information about it, I truly feel that what needs to happen is that more medical professionals need to know about factitious disorder and factitious disorder by proxy. Because when it's by proxy, it is abuse. And the sooner we catch them, the sooner we can get that child out of that home or unhealthy situation because it's not safe. And since they often don't want help, we need to do our best to protect the victims. So please share this video because you never know who it could help. The more medical professionals we have that better understand this illness, hopefully the less and less it happens and the less victims we have to deal with. Because again, so many people die from this. 9% of children, that is unacceptable. So please share and also share any comments or you know questions that you have down below. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.